Hi everyone, welcome to Eden's Secret. Today I'm attempting a cork bottle technique very similar to the water bottle technique that I did recently. Uh, I said, I said, didn't I? I'm never doing this again. But I loved it so much that I'm going to do it again today, but I'm not going to use as many colours. Um, I'm doing a different colour um, palette today. So we're going to start off with some olive oil. Just a tablespoonful of olive oil in each container. And so we're using a uh, white pearl. I'm using white pearl instead of titanium dioxide. And that's from Mica Mama, but I don't think they have it now. Uh, we're using Aztec gold. Aztec gold tends to be sold by most of the um, whoops, most of the Mica suppliers. We're using pink 201, neon pink. And that's also from Mineral Makeup Ingredients. And I'm also using some black oxide. some of that beautiful burlesque mica that I recently got from You Make It Up.
hopefully I've mixed up enough of each colour. I'm just doing one slab mould uh, instead of two and I'm going to do it shallower like I said last time. I just think it'll be better if I do half a batch rather than a full batch. Okay so I've got five heat safe jugs here, five colours. So I'm going to mix up some soap now. Now time to divide that soap into the five separate containers. Now time to mix in those colours so we're going with the white pearl first. I don't want too much colour in each one. I want the pink to be rather pale. So this is the Aztec gold. The Aztec gold just pop all of it in there because You do need quite a lot of that one. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the pink in because I really want this to be um, a pastel pink when it's saponified. And then for the burlesque, I'm loving this burlesque. I think a bit more of the burlesque and then of course we need some black oxide as well Always go from your lightest to your darkest colour when you blend it. So you can see that pink is really quite pale. I would like to put titanium dioxide in it, but I'm not going to. Now, I 
feel like we definitely need more of the burlesque in there. That's better. So we're going to give all of those a good stir, making sure you're scraping every little bit of scrap off the bottom and around the sides. With every colour. Hoping to avoid glycerin rivers, as they're called. And this is something I never get in soap, so I'm really lucky. I know there are other reasons why uh, glycerin rivers happen, but because it's something I don't get, um, it's not something I pay a lot of attention to, to avoid. But I know that the mixing definitely makes a difference. Because when I have got them, it's always because I haven't mixed in these colours properly. Now I should have already had my coke bottle ready but I haven't so we'll cut that now and because this is going to be a shallow soap we don't need to cut it very deep Just using a regular scalpel to put that. I've got lots of spare blades to hand. I might need to go around it with a pair of scissors because I've gone a little bit, a little bit wonky there on the cutting look. works much better with a pair of scissors. Right, so there we are. That's our Coke bottle ready to go. You can see it's a lot wider and the grooves are much bigger than the, than the water bottle technique we used. The reason I used a water bottle was because that's all I had in the house. We don't drink coke or anything like that. So to do this one I had to go out and buy a, a bottle of coke. Uh, and I have drank it um, just for this bottle. So we're starting off with the black. This looks a lot better. Definitely needs to be a very thin trace for, for this soap. Absolutely beautiful colours together.
I'm going to make sure with this time I actually uh, wipe the dribbles off the lip of the jug because last time I had dribbles all over the top of the soap and I don't want that this time just trying to perfect what I did last time and I did want a pale pink it probably will be sort of pale um, so what I've done is I've actually added some of the pearl mica into the pink and because I had to add uh, I put two teaspoonfuls of colour into each um, jug of soap it's made the pink brighter but I'm hoping because I put some of that white pearl in there it won't be quite as bright when it's set it's a beautiful technique I have to say I love it
So you'll notice this time I've just allowed the bottle to go wherever it wants to go. We're just putting in our last little drops now. It's a good idea to line all of your colour jugs up in a row so you know the sequence and you get the sequence correct every time you pour. If you want to, I mean you can mix them up if you want to. does take a long time pouring it this way and your cloth does get pretty dirty very tempting when you get towards the end to want to pour more soap on each colour because you just want to get it over with and get rid of it and you'll also notice that some colours have less in than others and you've just been a bit heavier uh, at pouring those colours so let me know do you like I mean obviously you're not going to know which you prefer until um, this is cut but do you prefer this one or the water bottle technique so it's a toss up between the cork bottle and the water bottle I think I like the colours in this one better it's very hard to decipher them actually when you're pouring such a little small quantity of each colour on like this And it has made me think of doing this another way as well. So probably next month we'll have a, another bottle pour. Looks like this will be the last gold. I think we'll get another pour out of the black and the pink and the white. And the burlesque I'm just gonna scrape what I've got of the gold there so I can get another gold drizzle on the top
get a little, yeah. I think that'll do so I'm just going to let that run down and then we're going to remove the bottle and see whether we've got dirty brown centre again from what it looks like here it doesn't look dirty brown it looks like burlesque right I think that's about it I'm going to be really careful this time Okay, so it's not ugly. You know, I noticed last time when we cut it, even though that centre was brown, um, inside it, it actually wasn't like that. It was actually still really pretty. So we're going to take a kebab stick. And I'm going to put a bit more of a pattern in this time. So we've got these coming down here like so. So this time, do I want to do that, then that, yeah. So on each curl, on each petal, I'm going to come right down the centre. Obviously some petals and curls are bigger than others. And then I'm going to fan out in between. Last time I just did uh, one skewer but I did it in the opposite direction to what I've just done it so this time we're going to start in the centre and we're going to go out to the corners so we've got one coming in and one going out There's already one coming in from this. I don't know whether to to put the skewer through one of those or not. I'm not going to. I mean, I could keep going. But then I would need to put three in each one, so I'm not going to do that. Also, this time, I'm not going to put any gold on the top. I'm just going to leave it as it is, because all the gold did, it just hid the, it just hid the lovely pattern. And there we are, that's our pour for today. Pretty cool, eh?
I will be back when this is ready to cut. Okay, we're back to cut. We've unmoulded and it's been raining out here and it's been in the summer. I've actually got some ash on my soap. Um, now I haven't got a planer, a soap planer, so I'm literally just going to use my knife to scrape off the ash and to plane it. It's weird that because someone just asked me the other day if I get ash on my soap and I don't. But I have to do. Can actually feel the moisture in that soap that I'm taking off actually and when you see the side you'll see it's really quite ashy so I'm going to take that off with just with a potato peeler look at that One Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to put some markers. I'm actually, because this is quite shallow, this soap, I'm just going to cut it with a knife. Um, so I know I need to put some marks on there. And this is the long side that I'm doing. This side is actually shorter. Uh, so I know that this side, each um, cut needs to be 8 centimetres. Uh, 
and then on this side um it's seven and a half centimeters i'm just thinking i can never get it even with that you know with the slab cutter whoops i've done eight there um i'm thinking i can probably get it more even with a knife I'm just going to mark it I could be wrong of course if it was a deep soap I wouldn't attempt to do it this way just using a kebab stick to score it I went to Sainsbury's and I haven't got any of the long ones of these left I really like them because they're square um, and they're good for scraping around the sides of your soap when it's in the mould right, so I'm just going to scrape those little squiggles off that we've got from doing the scoring now time to cut crumbled a little bit there so I'm a little bit frightened but it doesn't matter you can just scrape it off with the potato peeler can't you to say that is actually much easier than getting that great big slab mold cutter out
then the pattern that comes up from it is just so tiny and intricate. This one's very, very similar to a tiger stripe. As is this one.
and this one here this is what happens when you get the dribbles on the top it actually looks quite pretty to be honest here we have our cut loaf isn't it beautiful you can see it a lot better once the bars are cut and sliced up and getting in closer with that camera it actually makes a kind of wood grain effect doesn't it and tiger stripe very very pretty okay everyone thanks so much for watching i'll see you all very very soon and bye bye for now